Hey everyone, today I want to talk about a situation that's come up uh, several times over the years uh, for myself with clients and it, it's related to SQL licensing, specifically uh, when you've got a third party application that you're working with or evaluating and it directly connects to SQL and your users directly connect to that application. Uh, so it's called multiplexing. Microsoft is, does not allow multiplexing to reduce the number of client access licenses you would need for SQL. So if you're licensing SQL in the server plus Cal model, uh, then you need to really pay attention to this. If you're licensing SQL in the per core model, then you don't need to worry about how many CALs you do or don't have because it allows for any number of users or devices to connect uh, directly or indirectly to that SQL server. So we're specifically talking about uh, SQL in the server plus Cal model. And a specific example is uh, a health system that I was working with who had bought a Chrono solution, so time tracking for their employees, punch in, punch out. And the, whoever was selling the Chrono solution to them uh, was unaware of this rule around Microsoft. And from what I understand, they didn't sell Microsoft, so they didn't really understand the Microsoft licensing. Uh, well, they told uh, my client that, hey, all you need to do is license a SQL Server standard uh, along with a single Cal for the Kronos application, and then you're set. And that sounds great. It's the, it would be the lowest cost uh, possible to license SQL. Uh, so I think they were probably looking out for the customer. I hope so, and they were just misinformed. Uh, but what, what ended up happening is that because all of this health system's users were connecting to that Kronos application across multiple different devices, uh, and that Kronos application then connects to SQL, all of their users needed to have a SQL Cal for them to be in compliance with Microsoft. So when we did the evaluation, we found out it was much cheaper to actually license their SQL server in the per core model. And although it looked expensive at first, when you started to add up all the cows, which was you know a few thousand of them, uh, the cost just skyrocketed. And we couldn't really find another another opportunity to reuse that SQL standard license because so many of their applications uh, were accessed by all or a large number of their users, and it was just cost prohibitive to do so. So they basically burned uh, thousands of dollars on that server. Uh, because of some misinformation and that's what I want to make sure is clear for you today is that if you're evaluating uh, applications that you know tie to SQL that use SQL you have to consider that Microsoft doesn't reduce the number of CALs so if you've only got a handful of users that are ever going to connect to that application great license it in the server and Cal model you're going to save a bundle but if not you really need to start comparing the costs of the per core model to the servers and cows. And you could really put yourself in a much better position, save yourself money long term, and maintain compliance with Microsoft. So uh, I'll include a link to Microsoft's multiplexing brief. It covers more than just SQL, it covers Project, Visual Studio Team Foundation Server. Uh, it's, it's a really good document you should keep on hand. But with SQL 2016 coming out soon, I thought this might be a good thing to, uh, to cover today uh, since it's something that's been an issue for years now with a number of clients and I don't want you to get caught up in that when you're evaluating SQL 2016 as well. So if uh, you have any questions or if you've run into any scenarios like that, please uh, share in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I hope it was helpful.